Primo Levi, 1919-1987, on dehumanization. Then, for the first time, we become aware that our language lacks words to express this offense, the demolition of a man. In a moment, with almost prophetic intuition, the reality was revealed to us. We had reached the bottom. It is not possible to sink lower than this. No human condition is more miserable than this, nor could it conceivably be so. Nothing belongs to us anymore. They have taken away our clothes, our shoes, even our hair. If we speak, they will not listen to us, and if they listen, they will not understand. They will even take away our name, and if we want to keep it, we will have to find it in ourselves, the strength to do so, to manage somehow, so that behind the name, something of us, of all of us as we were, still remains. Imagine now a man who is deprived of everyone he loves, and at the same time of his house, his habits, his clothes, in short of everything he possesses. He will be a hollow man, reduced to suffering and needs, forgetful of dignity and restraint. For he who loses all often easily loses himself. He will be a man whose life and death can be lightly decided with no sense of human affinity. In the most fortunate of cases, on the basis of a pure judgment of utility, it is in this way that one can understand the double sense of the term extermination camp. I see and hear old Kuhn praying aloud, with his beret on his head, swaying backwards and forwards violently. Kuhn is thanking God because he was not chosen to be killed. Kuhn is out of his senses. Can Kuhn fail to realize that the next time it will be his turn? Does Kuhn not understand that what has happened today is an abomination, which no proprietary prayer, no pardon, no expatiation by the guilty, which nothing at all in the power of a man can ever clean again? If I was God, I would spit at Kuhn's prayer. Source, Primo Levi, Survival in Auschwitz, The Nazi Assault on Humanity, translated by Stuart Wolf, 1989-1990.